Sunday night is here once again, and that means scorecard is live on your screens on City TV. It was, or it's been, an absolutely interesting weekend because Bayer Leverkusen are champions of the German Bundesliga for the very first time in their history. That's an absolutely big feat, and they are still unbeaten in all competitions. It is uh, currently the longest unbeaten streak in the top five leagues in Europe for a while now. So we'll be uh, getting some uh, of the Bayer Leverkusen action. They've even named the street leading up to uh, the Bayer Arena after Xabi Alonso. So a lot going on with Bayer Leverkusen. On the English Premier League front, it was a weekend where um, the title race was going to take another twist. It was Manchester City who came out victorious. Liverpool first stumbled at home against Palace and then it was Arsenal also stumbling when they took on their old manager Unai Emery back at uh, home as Ante Kotoko are still struggling. A crowd heart of folk are trying to thread water so there's a lot to digest on the show. Let's take a quick break. When we come back I'll introduce my two guests on the show and then we'll get today's show going. Welcome back to Scorecard here on City TV. My two good friends are here, Edwin Kwakofi, Coach Christopher Nimli. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Charlie. We're back. We are back again. <laughs> look, that, is, that Charlie is pregnant with a lot of yeah, things. Yeah, it is. Because, look, um, if you look at the way things have gone today, yesterday, especially today, man. Yeah. I, I, I don't know what is wrong with these people. <laughs> Win the league. You are, how can you be handing over the thing to a hungry lion? Yeah, today, yeah. today. It, How? You should have seen you should have seen Klopp on the Liverpool time. All he was saying was wow. 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 That's what it. is this? <laughs> so Somebody has Klopp has become an ambulance. <laughs> 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 Wowing on the touch line. Look, the Liverpool one mm -hmm. was painful. Yeah. But the Arsenal one was even more painful. Unforgivable. Yeah. Unforgivable. 84th minute, 87th minutes. Look, I wish I could be sitting by my very good honourable. Yeah, <laughs> Honorable Sam Jacka George. Oh, Charlie. No more. Good evening. <laughs> but you see, look, I'll, I'll I'll call him tomorrow. It's a because hard. Look, it's a hard pill to swallow. It is a breaker. Yeah. It is a hard. I, I don't know which one. Start. I don't know which one is more heartbreaking, either the Liverpool one or the Arsenal. No, I think the Arsenal for, one. For Liverpool, for Liverpool too. This is the second time Crystal Palace is putting. Yes, <laughs> but the Arsenal one is even look worse because. They knew what they had to do. And they started the game week on top of the table. Exactly. They knew what they had to do. By the time they got onto the pitch, the two teams they have already played. Team. So they knew the results. Man, you would think it's any easier because you know the results. It's just never that straightforward. And that's what we found out this weekend. We'll be getting into those games a little later on the show. Let's start off on the local front and let's start off with Dreams FC taking on Kumasi as Antikotoko. Dreams have been doing well on the continent. Locally, it's not been that great for them. So they were playing one of their outstanding uh, matches as Antikotoko came to town. And this is how it played out. So Dreams FC accounting for Asante Kotoko and their woes compound. Um, guys, we've spoken about Kotoko extensively on the show. On Friday, we spoke about them extensively on yeah. Sports Panorama. Looks like nothing has changed. Yes, and look, it's a bit difficult. Um, I'm still of the view that don't sack the manager because eventually that is where it's going to head mm -hmm. to. Mm -hmm. Don't sack him. This team will come good if and only if those above the manager or the decision makers will stay firm and believe in the process. Hmm. Look, take it or leave it. The first goal they conceded was a wicked deflection. The second goal, I thought defensively, they could have dealt with it because how can you play in a high line yeah. when there's nobody pressing the ball? One pass from joint entry and yep. the man is free through on goal from the center line. So I think that, yes, it is a bit difficult by their very high standard and historical background mm -hmm. They never envisage that they will be playing seven games, the first seven games in the second round and not even win one of them. Because yeah. by the end of the first round, they were second on the log. Hmm. They didn't start the season well. They did so well in the middle of the season, in first round, then getting to the end, and they were positioned. So I even remember sitting here that I think if they can continue with that form, they yeah. are most likely to win the league because of how um, 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 uh, strong and then very determined they were. But having said that, if you look at the way they've played, they've been missing some very key players. Those uh -huh. key players who will walk in there and get them to play differently are not part of the team. Noticeably, the likes of Richmond Lamte. Whatever they did well in the attacking sense in that uh -huh. first round, 
He was so instrumental yep. to the goals they were scoring, his forward passing, his domination of games, where he would get and then control the temple of games. There's nobody in, in this Kotoko team doing that as we speak. But yet still, the players themselves will have to find a way mm -hmm. of standing up and playing for the badge. There's some funny stories going about, alleged, but from, if you look at the sources of the story, when you play for Kotoko and things are not going well, hmm. you cannot be seen in the nightclub chilling if you're a player. Not one, not two, not three. The four, five of you chill. It's like you don't understand the context of what's going on what in the club you're playing for. At the club you're playing for. Kotoko is not any other club. I will not say arguably. I think by far they're the biggest club in Ghana. So if you get an opportunity to play for such a club, mm -hmm. it, should, it, should, it, should, it should go through your system. Attitudinal-wise, you need to be smart. You need to be well intelligent. You cannot uh, think that on the pitch, yes, but off the pitch you can go and behave anyhow. Prosper Ogum will have to calm down. I think the supporters are putting so much pressure and it's gotten to the team and that is what you don't want to happen. Mm -hmm. Especially, this is a young team a team undergoing transition. If they do well, you applaud them. If they don't do well, you encourage them. You don't yeah. destroy them. From what is going on with the Kotoko fraternity, every single supporter is more or less destroying the team instead of encouraging these boys. You see, yeah. If you get rid of the coach as we speak and you bring in a new manager, this coach bought as many as, what, 17 yeah. players, 10 first team players, and, and then... Um, a couple of youth team players. Exactly. So whoever comes in, if the person comes and he doesn't see the player is good enough, he's going to ship them out. Hmm. Once he does that, you need to go and do another recruitment. So for the sake of the transition that they themselves admitted that they were going to go through, allow the process to come. I don't think they'll get relegated. Kotoko, after all, didn't set a target that they were going to win the league. They are not at the level of winning the league. Uh -huh. Nobody should get me, uh, uh, should more or less deceive himself. Kotoko are not at the level of winning league. But look, just before Edwin have a stake, we cannot be playing our league match on that pitch. Hmm. And what is so appalling is the fact that it is a pitch that the president of the Ghana Football Association teams plays there. You see, when I see you play uh, on, on that pitch and you, 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 are, you want Kumasi, um, Babaya Sports Stadium should be looking better for you to host your calf. Um, game against Zamalek, I look at you differently. What exactly? Dreams FC now mm -hmm. have been playing at the for the past two to three years. Yeah. They cannot tell me that they can't do something about that pitch. Because mm -hmm. whether they like it or not, it may, they may not own the pitch as their body. But that's their home ground. It. But that's their home ground. Some form of improvement must be added to the pitch. Look at how the players were struggling to, put, to get the ball under control. I don't Envy these players one bit at all. And for the Dreams FC players, they have to go through this every single day because I'm told that some of their training sessions also take place there. And look, if, if we want our football to get to a certain level, uh -huh. if you are an individual and you think you want to do football and you are not capable, try and bring in investors so that they'll change the face of our game. Okay? That, that pitch is unacceptable and I sit here and condemn it. Something, you see, we have the what? The licenses, the what? The club licenses. License. They are all jokers. They are sleeping on the job. Why should they be accepting such a pitch? Hmm. If Dreams FC will have to be brought back to Accra or taken to Soga Copper to go and use the Red Bull facility, take them there, let them go and use it. Don't say because it belongs to the president of the FA, they should be allowed to play on such pitches. It is so bad and I condemn it to the max. Right. I'm going to continue from where coach left off. Dreams FC, your profile has increased. Ah. You are now playing on the African continent. Mm -hmm. So teams that you are going to be facing, their fans, their uh, managers, the technical team, they are going to be watching the Ghana Premier League, looking at how you are playing. And this is what they see. Would they be interested in watching any future matches beyond uh, this period? No, they, won't, they wouldn't be. So obviously viewership goes down or it stays at the level it, it currently is. We want it to go up, we want it to rise, but we can't be telecasting matches on such pitches. We can't have our best teams playing on such pitches week after week. It's unacceptable, as Coach said. 
to uh, Asante Kotoko, uh, I agree with coach. I don't think the coach should be sacked. First of all, Nati Ogum has a project in place. The Kotoko team has a project in place. Sacking him now, it basically cuts that project in half. And I don't think that uh, doing that benefits the club in any way. I think often, more often than not, Kotoko and Hearts and all our big teams, they choose the safe option, the easy option, which is get rid of the coach, start again, hope for a new manager bounce. Once that ends, get a new coach, start again, hope for a new manager bounce, and hopefully one of them is successful enough to win a trophy before the next season, they let them go. And it's, you don't build a long-term project like that. But for the coach and the players, if they thought that the pressure at the moment was intense, they should be prepared to, yeah, for it to go even higher because now mm -hmm. Hearts of Oak are above them. The fans won't tolerate that. They were a little happy to go along with Kotoko's flow because they were still above Hearts of Oak, their biggest rivals. With Hearts of Oak now above them, the pressure is just going to intensify. Hmm. Let's take a quick break here on the show. When we come back, we'll take you to the foreign front. Welcome back to Scorecard here on City TV. Let's take you to the foreign front now and let's go to the Vitality Stadium. AFC Bournemouth were up against Manchester United. It was an interesting game. Ghana's Antoine Semenyon missed the game through an injury. In the end, the two teams shared the points. AFC Bournemouth played to the best of their ability. In the end, they settled for a point. Edwin? Well, I think they were very unlucky not to get away from this game with all three points. Obviously, mm. they were the much better side. They had better chances. They failed to take those chances. But for Man United, I think we saw a manifestation of the problems they've been having all season. First, individual mistakes. Players not seeming motivated enough. Mm -hmm. The manager himself having a few issues. And a bit of luck there with that penalty. Because personally, I don't think that was a penalty mm. for Manchester United. I don't know if Coach will share those opinions. But I think... The ball hits one player, uh -huh. then ricocheted onto Adam Smith. Not enough time for him to react. Yeah. He actually seemed to retract his, his hand. hand. And even though it did hit him, I don't think that was enough for a penalty. But at this moment, the pressure is going to keep increasing on Eric Ten Hag. The hmm. results are not coming. I mentioned that the players, they seem to have stagnated in terms of performances. Not just uh, the ones he has seemingly improved, like Ganacho, mm -hmm. like Kobe Menu. Everyone seems to be at a level now that we don't see them reaching a certain, uh, an, an extra level yep. to help United out of six sticky situations. And it's been three games now, three consecutive games mm -hmm. where United, the levels have dropped in key moments of the game against Chelsea, against Liverpool, yep. when they were up again. And in this game against Bournemouth, right from the start, Fortunately, they had um, Bruno, who was at or close to his best yeah. in this game. Otherwise, they would have been out of it. And when you have a manager starting to attack journalists or leave hmm. press rooms when certain questions are asked, you can tell that this pressure is getting to him. The beginning eventually, of the end. Eventually, yeah. it's going to get up to the people who make decisions that he is st he's starting to crumble under the pressure. The players are not playing for him, mm -hmm. or they are not able to reach the levels he needs to get a performance out of them. And eventually, they are not going to uh, retain you in, uh, in the job. And the players are going to know that. They are going to suspect that this is the thinking that is going to happen. Very soon, this manager yep. is not going to be at the job. Why should I sacrifice myself for them? There's basically nothing to play for. I'm mm -hmm. out of the Champions League places. Europa League, do I really want to? fight for a Europa League place? No, hmm. I don't want to. So the season is just petering out for United. The performances aren't there. The results aren't f following. And it seems as though Eric Ten Hag is nearing the end of the Europa to Manchester United. Whew. Yeah, I, I have a dissenting view. I think that uh, this manager is the right manager for the job. Because, Still think so? Yeah, I, I really do think so. This team needs proper overhauling. That is where the problem is. If you look at the players he has brought, hmm. he's brought Onana. Onana clearly has shown that he's deserving to be in the goal. What has not gone right for Onana is the fact that he's not 
played with his steady back four. He's been in the post and he's had to cope with 28 different back pair. Huh. Okay, a back line in front of him. He's never had 28 different 28 variations, 28 of, their variations back line. of players in front of him. Definitely, there will be no chemistry there. And you don't blame the manager for that uh -huh. because of injury. Two, if you look at the body language of some of the players, look, if you are saying you are playing for Man United, Liverpool, and you need to be motivated by the manager, if I'm in charge, I'll sack you from the team quick. Hmm. Because how many players get a chance to play for Man United? That's an opportunity of a That's lifetime. That's of a lifetime. That mm -hmm. alone. Mm -hmm. Because if you listen to Paul Scholes, Rock Kinnis, when they were playing for United, Fergie need not motivate them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Fergie never went there. They themselves knew. But by putting on the jets, by wearing the badge, they need to step out there and play for the team. Okay? What needs to be done mm -hmm. in order to bring this thing back to the level is what Jim Ratcliffe and his people are not trying to do. Do you know what they should be doing? What's that? This manager came into this team after he's gone through eight worst ever Premier League season. Mm -hmm. He won the Carabao Cup, got you back Champions League football, and then he lost in the FA Cup final. He gave a list that sat 11 players, bring me at least seven or eight. Of all those he requested for, he was given his number one choice in Macy Mount, and then his second choice, mm -hmm. striker. No other first choice was brought to him. Now, the season starts, and then there are a series of injuries here and there. He's battling with the changes and all that. The point I'm making is that the English press have not highlighted the English players in the team who are not performing, like Marcus Rashford. The week in, week out, they are pointing at the manager. If you are Jim Ratcliffe, you should be telling the players that, look, mm -hmm. I'm going to provide proper structure for this manager to work under. Whether you like it or not, he's the man for the job. Mm -hmm. If you refuse to back him and allow the English press to be telling the next moment his job is on the line, the players themselves begin to buy into it. That, look, this man is not the man for the future. So then they down tools. And that's exactly what has happened. If you look at the goals they conceded there, mm -hmm. how do you blame the manager for conceding such a goal? They were elementary. They were kindergarten stuff. And at this level, if you defend like that, you get beat. You can't tell me Onana is not playing for this manager. Dalo, you can't tell mm -hmm. me he's not playing for mm -hmm. this manager. Okay? Somebody like Rashford. I mentioned it because I have never seen or I've never heard the English press go for him like they've gone for Anthony, like they've gone for Casemiro, that like they've gone for Rafael Varane. But if you look at Man you week in, week out, the worst player on that page is Marcus Rashford. Is it because he's English? That is so unfair. Hmm. So you get rid of Ten Hag. Whoever you bring. We'll come and face the same problem. I've listened to Scholes. I've listened to Gary Neville. I've listened to Ray Rooney recently. He said, truth be told, most of the players need to leave the club. You need, you need a completely new reset. And mm -hmm. if I believe that with the record of Eric Ten Hag in working with young players, look at Kobe Meno, look at Kwambala, Look at uh, Gainacho. Look at Ahmad. The young boys are beginning to come to the party. Trust him. Mm -hmm. Give him a proper organogram to work with. Know his level. Get proper director of football, technical director, Berada and coach, proper CEO who understands the game. When they come and they take over, this team will get better. That mm. is my view on it. Let's get to more action. Manchester City were in action over the weekend. They were up against Luton Town. It was supposed to be light work, and that's exactly what it was. So Manchester City, uh, Jeremy Doku, Yosko Vardio scored twice with his right foot in about, what, five days, six days? They are yeah. looking really good. They are really looking really good. You see, up to this stage, or uh -huh. before the commencement, this was the first game, I think, no, the second game of the round. They knew what they had to do. Uh -huh. They've never had their destiny in their hands. All they needed to do was to focus and win their games. And that's exactly what they've done. Mm -hmm. So they win. They know they win. They'll go on top of the league for some time yep. and compel Liverpool and Arsenal to respond. They couldn't react or they couldn't respond in a way that will make sure parity was to be restored. Now, as we speak, as a result of that performance mm -hmm. and as a result of Liverpool and Arsenal not living up to the challenge, Man City sit on top of the league. This result was never in doubt. 
tactically, technically, they were the better team. And we knew. We did a game on radio and it was clear that it was just a matter of the first goal going in mm -hmm. and the floodgates would be open. Once that floodgate got open, it was barrage of attack and attack. And they were end product to most of the things that they were doing. So for me, uh, um, um, business as usual, Pep Guardiola <laughs> is on top of the league. And let's see who has got what it takes to take them from there. I think the league started is gone. It's gone, Charlie. Edwin, is it if, gone? Is it gone? No, I don't think it's gone. I think there's always a chance. If Liverpool could lose to Crystal Palace at Anfield, there's a chance that Man City could lose any of the games that they have left. Is it, this, this, just to yeah. help you on that, and the Pep, they've never thrown away such an <laughs> opportunity. I think they've, I, I, I won't say they, well, they haven't thrown away, but they've always stumbled towards the end of the campaign. The only problem is that whenever they stumble, the team's chasing them. Those don't them. take advantage. So you say they've, they've, they've never thrown away. True. Look, true. You look at this game in particular, and if City had not scored that early goal, it would have been more difficult for them. Because the way looting, First half ended 1-0. It ended 1-0. Mm -hmm. And they scored really early. Mm -hmm. And the way looting set up throughout the half, I saw their heat map from the first minute to around the 60th minute. The six-yard box was lit up like a Christmas tree. They had packed their area. Mm -hmm. So it was ten, basically 10 men behind the ball. And they had narrowed it so it was forcing Man City wide. Mm -hmm. And then once they know their strengths, they are very good in the air. Haaland was not going to compete with their centre-backs in aerial duels. So City knew that they weren't going to cross the ball. The only way they were going to get through this team was an um, exciting play from a winger uh -huh. or play through the middle. And they had packed the middle so much that there was no way City were getting through them. In the second half, it improved because Doku, instead of switching from left to right, stayed on the left and caused uh -huh. an overload. Uh -huh. He, he, he was given so much space that he could cook and then he gave Man City the advantage. I think in uh, other matches where they face low blocks, it's going to be really difficult for City. They need uh, some moments of magic. They need mm. some special players for, to step up and come to the party. We saw this from Doku to, uh, yep. in, in this weekend. It looked like he was completely in the... I haven't seen him like this since about yeah, we, the first five, six weeks of the season. Is, is it, exactly. They've always had those special players. Look, don't forget, they played the game, this game without Foden, without Bernardo Silva. The rest are a good chunk of their players. They're a good chunk of the players. So at, if you look at the fixtures that they've got, relatively, they've got the easier yeah, fixtures. Yeah, they've got the easiest fixtures. You expect fixtures. them to wrap it up. Hmm. Let's go to another game that was difficult for an opponent this weekend. Liverpool were up against an old foe. Remember the slip-up um, in that Liverpool game? There was a um, Crystal Palace game also that ended 3-3 in that particular season. I remember Dwight Gill doing a thing over um, Liverpool that time around. Palace were up against it again. 14th minute, a Berechi as a goal, and Liverpool could not respond. So Liverpool will be left cursing their stars. Um, is it title goal? You said it's not title goal, but who do they so. blame for this? I mean, you create chances you can't score, manage our players. Look, in the last three games which Liverpool have failed to win, they've had 28, 21, and 19 shots hmm. on goal. They are creating the chances. They are playing the right build-up play. They are getting players into good positions, but they are not taking them. And over the week, uh, we've been hearing talks about the emotions that are going with Liverpool this season. They are playing to, they are trying to get uh, Jurgen Klopp a good farewell uh, as he's leaving. They want to get him as many trophies as possible. And this might be playing into the players' heads. When they get into positions where composure is needed, mm -hmm. They lack it. So they are taking shots in positions that they shouldn't. They are making decisions that they shouldn't. And they are missing chances that you would expect them to uh, Typically put away. away. Yeah. yeah. Usually they put these away. But the pressure is getting to them. The whole talk about Klopp's farewell tour, whether they will end with a Premier League trophy, uh, the European Cup, uh, the treble, quadruple, all that talk. It's definitely getting to the players' heads. So you can tell that they are creating chances. They are playing well. They are, they are getting into good uh, positions. But the composure to put the ball away, that's what's affecting them. If they can overcome this mental block. And I think Jurgen Klopp needs to sit his players down uh -huh. and tell them that this is a regular season. Forget about me leaving. 
that does that is not important anymore. Just focus on each game as it comes, and just pray that Man City slip up because right now it's Man City's hands. Mm -hmm. But there's every chance that once we have been able to slip up, they can slip up as well. I know coach says it's not statistic statistically possible because City have have done it before, but they still have to face Brighton away from home. Still have to face Tottenham away from home. These are tough matches that they could slip up at. And even the smaller matches that you don't think they could slip up, those could mm -hmm. be banana peels as well. So just play your game. Ensure that you put these chances away. Ensure that you play how you are used to playing. And just focus on your, your game. And things might work out for you. Because right now, it seems they are over eager to get the, the goals and it's not working for them at the moment. Good. For me, my only problem has to do with the, the manner in which they are defending. Because in midweek, we saw them against Atlanta and Jorgen Klopp did admit that the, the level of tactical indiscipline and lack of proper tactical awareness cost them the game. Hmm. In this game, the goal they conceded, if you look at the sequence, Crystal Palace had to pass the ball through Liverpool. I don't remember the last time I see yeah, I, a team I, I, I saw Liverpool. a team pass the ball through Liverpool, no space, brought it back, went back, recycled the move, just patient waiting for the moment to release the pass. And for Liverpool to have, I think, look, Konate and Van Dijk, I think, were to be blamed for that goal. Huh. We are not going to look at it tactically, but if you are Konate, and the ball goes wide. A similar thing happened with the Arsenal game. And I will yep. use that to, ex to explain that when we go to the tactical ball. When the, anytime the ball goes wide, I don't know what goes into the heads of the defender. What, what makes them think that they, they should just focus on the ball uh -huh. because they can block them. You don't know the trajectory of the ball. You don't know the trajectory that the ball is going to take. If yep. it comes into your path, mm. you can block it. But they are told that in defending, you keep your eyes on the ball, but before you have to turn and see who is the on, or the incoming opponent who is free, because eventually that player is the one going to place the ball in the back of the end. Look, if you if you saw the way is there, eh? yeah, nobody around him. He just walked himself onto the ball and just oh, then yeah. placed it in the back. At this level, you cannot be seen defending like that. If you are going to do that, then I'm afraid you have to score two, three, four, five goals to win a football game. But at this level, it's about winning, no matter how ugly. Hmm. Make sure you find a way of winning, to win. And that is what Liverpool couldn't do today. Let's take another break here on the show. When we come back, we'll get to that Arsenal game, and then we'll bring you that Leverkusen uh, championship winning game. Stay with us here on Scorecard. We'll be right back. Now, Arsenal were at home, and they were expecting to win against their old manager, Unai Emery, when he brought his Aston Villa team to town. That's not how it played out. Arsenal lost the game by two goals to nil. Check out the highlights. We'll go to the tactical board after that. So Leon Bailey and Oli Watkins doing the job for Aston Villa. Very hard pill for Arsenal fans to swallow. Coach, take yes. us to the board. Just before I go to the board, let me borrow the frame of the commentator. He said what? Villa has done a real job on Arsenal. Mm -hmm. Horrible echoes from last season. Mm. Look, as we go through the tactical board, you realize that I think the two Arsenal goals were partly to be blamed on their two trusted centre-backs. Hmm. Because I've looked at this over and over <coughs> again and again and again. So I'll uh -huh. roll it. Uh -huh. Once it rolled for the first time, there's a drone shot that will point out every problem I want to highlight. Uh -huh. So we are going. If you look at this, the two centre-backs were sleeping on the job and then... The God played. Okay, so beautiful. Let me stop it here. <coughs> now, if you look at this, at this moment, mm -hmm. there was absolutely no danger. Mm -hmm. Arsenal had numbers. In fact, they had all their outfield players behind the ball. Mm -hmm. Because look at where the ball is. This is where the ball is. So every Arsenal player there is active. That is the way we describe them. They were all there, so they could see exactly what Villa was all about. So when you roll this a bit and it goes, let me pause it here. At this stage, there were active and inactive Arsenal players. Mm -hmm. Good. These were the active Arsenal players. One, two, three, four, five, six, and I think Martinelli. 
he was very active. I've included Martinelli because mm -hmm. of the goal scorer. Mm -hmm. Because <coughs> of the goal scorer. He's supposed to have been now, keeping an eye on him. This is this is the goal scorer, Leo Bailey. Mm -hmm. At this stage, look at Martinelli. He was looking and he could clearly see that. Look at his this should have been his movement. That mm. he slept on the job. Maybe per the numbers he saw in the box. He, he was 100% sure that the defenders were going to block the cross from not coming across the line. Mm -hmm. So he relaxed. Mm -hmm. Now, once you relax and your defenders don't make the block, then you, you are in big trouble. At this stage, too, hmm. the three Arsenal centre-backs had two Villa strikers in between the three of them. Yep. And the most active player here, I think this is Zinzenko eh? mm -hmm. or Tomiyasu, uh, it was Declan Rice. That was Declan Rice, yeah. yes. This is the most active Arsenal player. I just used the arrow to point him or to more or less push him out of the way. He, together with the goalkeeper, these two should be communicating to Saliba and who? Gabriel. Mm -hmm. Now look, behind the two of you, mm -hmm. there are two attackers. Because at, if you look at where the ball is at this moment, Arsenal had enough numbers there to deal with the situation. That didn't happen. Now once... Villa then went through. He paused it here again. Yep. Even at this stage, look at Saliba, Gabriel, and Declan Rice. They still did not understand where they were. At this stage, Martinelli now, who should have been looking at Leon Bailey, have his eyes on the ball. And he's forgotten about the young man here. He's forgotten about this man here. Hmm. Look at the space. Look at, look, look at the amount of space exactly. he has. At times, it is very difficult. But at this level, some form of communication will have to go. We have to play in order for us to get it right. Mm -hmm. And again, the three Arsenal defenders here, the three Arsenal guys here, still, they all have their eyes on the ball, mm -hmm. not looking. And I'm saying that Declan Rice here was the most important defender together with the goalkeeper. They should be telling Saliba and Gabriela, look, Oli Watkins and his strike partner are right behind you. And look, if you watch the movement of Oli Watkins, you see, he checked. Let's go. Okay, to move. Uh, Why is he not going? I think you should play, press it out. Yeah. Okay. Then look at, look, look, look at Odegaard. Uh, uh, Martinelli. Martinelli. He slept on the job. Here, we give you a perfect view. Mm -hmm. They didn't block the ball. Look at where Leon Bailey came from. They all seem very uncertain. Very uncertain as to who yeah. to deal with the situation. And that, in my view, the goalkeeper, mm -hmm. the two centre-back, and Martinelli in particular, he had, you see, from the beginning of the move, he had Leon Bailey. He looked at the situation. He saw Leon Bailey. They won the ball. Then he decided not, oh, he's completely inactive. Yeah. But no one. He was Villa's most active player. And as a result, the ball <laughs> ended up in the back of the net. Now, look at the second goal. I understand perfectly what Arsenal tried to do at this stage of the game. They were, they were losing the, the game. game. Four minutes is a game they had to win. Mm -hmm. So they needed to throw men forward. But watch what happened from the start. Unfortunately, that was the giveaway from Jorginho. Let it roll and then I'll point it out. The problem here is that how on earth was Smith Row the one, the last man? Mm -hmm. Now, boss, beautiful. These are the two Arsenal centre back. These are the two. This is Saliba and his man. They were bumping into each other. They were bumping into each other. And look at Oli Watkins. How, how, how do you leave? How do you leave Villa's most prolific striker mm -hmm. all alone by himself in his own half? Now, one Jorginho forced the ball through. And he couldn't get the pass right. The who did the ball go to? You retail him up. Right. He's a very good technical player. Mm -hmm. And technically, he will pick the pass. And that was exactly what he did. So Jorginho unnecessary pass there. And Oli Watkins. Look at the starting position, Oli Watkins. He's true on goal. Mm -hmm. Who is that? Smith Rowe. He holds him up all, all day. That's such, a, that's such a brilliant finish. No contest. And look, the man has shown that he needs to be on the plane to Germany. Mm -hmm. Oli Watkins deserves his position in that England team yeah. that goes to Germany. Because look, this is what you need. Do you know why I'm happy? Mm. I'm happy for Una Emery. I know the Arsenal supporters may not like what I'm saying. Yeah. But let's call the spade a spade. I think, I've always said this, that Arsenal were not fair to him. They didn't give him enough time mm -hmm. like they gave 
Mikel Ateta, they didn't back him like they backed Ateta. If they had backed him, mm -hmm. I think we would have done it. Because at the very first time of asking, he got them to the final of the Europa Cup. Mm -hmm. The next season, the players he wanted, they didn't give to him. And then when the season didn't go yeah. well, they sacked him. But this is an icing on the cake. This is a proper way to pay back mm. those people who didn't support you. And I'm happy for the goalkeeper too. Yeah. Martinez, yep. you remember? Yep. I also believe that he left Arsenal oh. at the time where mm -hmm. he should have been given the chance to prove that he was he's number, one. number one very good goalkeeper. Well, coach, coach can take a seat now. We'll be closing the show pretty soon. I just want to show you something that happened in Germany today. So Bayer Leverkusen... Uh, were in action today against Werder Bremen. Uh, they won the game by a whopping five goals to crown off their amazing season so far. So they are champions of Germany for the first time in their history. A little bit of um, is issue with Naby Keita. He plays for Bremen. So apparently he was told he wasn't going to be part of the match squad and he didn't show up at all. He didn't show up at all. In fact, he didn't show up to the stadium at all. He didn't <laughs> join the team for the game at all. Let's just get footage of that Bremen game and then just Leverkusen doing their thing before we close the show up. So it's a party out there for Leverkusen. Really, really befitting performance. I give my guys 30 seconds. Coach, Edwin, just quick thoughts. They are deserving that. champions. Yeah. I'm happy they've put an end to the Bayern Munich nonsense. <laughs> Look, they ended it in style with some mm -hmm. wonderful goals. Probably so. their best performance of the season. Oh, and they, they deserve to give their fans such a good send-off because mm. it's been a wonderful season for them. Thank you very much, Coach. Thank you, Edwin. Same time next week, Scorecard will be back on your screens.